Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It is Miss Madison. Today we're going to be continuing talking about the elements of art. Last time we talked about value and it's going to be really important that you guys watch that video to kind of get a better understanding about texture we're going to talk about today. So texture is how something would feel if we were to touch it or how we would think it would feel if we could touch it. So that means, for example, the first part would be a 3D texture. If I can actually like my plant here, reach out and feel the bumps on it, that makes it a 3D texture. But if we're talking about, let's say all the Renaissance paintings we've looked at in our history, when we can really see how soft the hair looks, the way they painted all of the cloth so it looks realistic, and we can feel how soft it would be. Or if they have a highly rendered tree, and we could almost like, it's almost like we did reach out, we could feel all the bumps on the bark. But, obviously, it being a canvas or a paper, whatever it is, it's 2D, it's not actually going to feel like that. Our 2D textures can actually be broken down and classified into two different ways. They can be implied. So if we look at Van Gogh's Starry Night, obviously the lines we're seeing in the sky isn't something we would see in nature, but especially with impressionistic art, those thick brush strokes, it creates an implied texture that we can still pick up on. Now, if we look at maybe a painting of an animal, the fur is obviously realistic to what they have in nature, but it still is a 2D painting. But because it is something that is in real life an actual thing, we call that a simulated texture. It's simulating what that texture would actually look like in real life. So before we really jump into it, it's just important to know some of the vocabulary words when we're talking about texture. So I have written up here texture buzzwords. These are going to be words that we use a lot when we're describing anything that we're trying to draw. If we're trying to draw a tree, for example, I probably wouldn't say that it's a smooth texture. That's a pretty rough texture, I would say. So what we're using to describe what we're drawing and the texture we're trying to perceive is going to be really important to how we're going to choose to render it. So make sure you have a piece of paper, a pen, a pencil, something to draw with with you, and let's get started. So today I'm going to be doing two different textures. The first one is going to be a grassy one. I'm starting off in pencil first, starting off in the middle ground, building up some of my values, some of my middle grays, um, my lighter values before I'm going down and building up my darker values. My light sources I wrote up there is coming in. I'm doing the same thing with pen. I'm applying pressure more on the first point when it hits the paper and then kind of releasing pressure as I go up. That's how I do a lot of my strokes. My tree right here, I'm really kind of focusing on building up my darker values. And then also just using a more kind of energetic line and that helps give a lot more texture when I'm trying to create a rough surface. In the pen, I'm doing that a lot by building up a lot more of my hatching lines and coming in with more of my cross hatching as well. So looking at the final two right here, technically final four, on the left we have more of our soft, grassier, maybe fur, um, more of that smooth texture. I really wanted to give that impression that it was going off in more naturalistic ways. So I tried to break the border a lot for um, my fur textures. Now you can start to see why learning value was a really important part of our lesson by centralizing an area where I could make it darker that was really important to create a more naturalistic sense of something that was furry. Now for my bark on the right side, both in pen and pencil, I used more short, small strokes instead of the long, broad ones I used for the fur to create more of a rough texture. Now for my bottom tree in pen, I zoomed it out a little bit because I wanted you guys to see how still using our hatching and our cross hatching, we can start to achieve a sense of form. Form is going to be our next element art that we're going to talk about a little bit more. And I wanted you guys to see how we can still use value, line, and everything we keep talking about to create something that can look super cool and realistic with just a few simple lines and a little bit of value. Alright, I'll see you guys tomorrow for art history.